Good morning. I'm hoping that we're online. Yes. Okay, great. Well, good morning. Welcome. We're so happy that you're able to join us today um, online and in person. And we would uh, love for you to stand and sing with us. Good morning. Welcome to Creve Corps Christian Church. I know I told everybody first service, I'm like, that is a much shorter walk than coming from upstairs. I feel like I'm on like a mission impossible coming down. Like, damn, nah, nah, don't get in front of the camera. So this is much easier. I, I really enjoyed that. Um, so if you haven't noticed, my dad's on vacation. So they allowed me to play. <laughs> so uh, I hope everybody's doing well. You know, the weather is really nice outside. It's uh, 
just nice right now. Enjoy it while it lasts. So, uh, you know, we've got a, a little of appreciation thing going on here before we get to the month. We'll get to, we're thankful for the ones who really come and uh, clean all of our pews and our, our bathrooms and make sure everything is sanitary and safe for all of us that come here and worship. We really appreciate that. We wouldn't be able to do it without them. We really wouldn't. Um, I, I occasionally need a board to the back of the head of a reminder. We haven't forgot them, but somebody did let me know, and I'm really appreciative of that. Um, because I don't want our cleaning people to be taken for granted whatsoever. That, that is something that we are so happy that they're doing, so grateful that they do. And speaking of appreciation, speaking of appreciation, I'm glad that there are other mics on here. Um, it's Pastor Appreciation Month. And uh, I, uh, you know, so we're so grateful on behalf of the on behalf of the leadership, and I believe I can speak for the congregation. We're really grateful for what Bill does. I've been with him long enough to be able to say, I can tell you probably how he's going to respond when you thank him. Hey, Bill, good job. We appreciate you do. Who? Me? No, no, I haven't done anything. You thank Jesus. Jesus uses us, Bill. But yes, I do agree with you. We do need to thank Jesus. But Jesus uses us in there, so we do thank you. We appreciate that. We do have a little box in back for him. Um, totally up to you on how you do that. We also have snack pack back there. Um, at Sunday school, hasn't been re-going that all the kids at LaSalle that don't have lunches or well, lunches on the weekends, maybe a little snack afterwards. Uh, we've taken upon ourselves to help get them some food that the kids that don't have food. Um, and that any little bit helps. Seriously, any little bit helps. We want. To, we don't want to stop giving any. I think we're up to a hundred. We're up to hundred kids that we're able to help out. So we want to continue that going. Show the love uh, for that. And also our offering plates are in back, um, so you can drop it off before or after service. Or we have mailbox online giving. Um, you can also in your offering envelope. I believe you can online. You could do another thing for snack pack if you so feel. Uh, that you want to do that, um, please do. And um, we're just grateful that you're here with us um, and come to worship with us, both here and online. Other than that, well, Rhonda has an announcement. I do. It's been in the church newsletter. It's also in the bulletin. But if you are able, two weeks from today, October 25th, we will meet back here at the church at 1 o'clock, travel to Havana to pack shoeboxes for Operation Christmas Child. This year it's even more important because there are so many groups that normally pack that aren't able to this year, so we want to truly make a concerted effort to do that. So October 25th, two weeks from today, meet here at 1, travel to Havana to pack, and then be back by 6. Thank you, Rhonda. Yes, that's always a fun time, and the kids are in need still desperately. Um, other than that, I think we have everything. Oh, uh, I have a couple of prayer requests. Um, we have a family member in Kentucky. Uh, she's, by my standard, Aunt Brenda. Um, and uh, she has fallen and broken her shoulder. And she also helps uh, her daughter, who has Down syndrome, who is 44? 44. So she's in need of help with family. But please ask for prayer. We ask for prayer for her. And then uh, one of our youth group kids that comes on Wednesday nights and usually comes uh, here on Sundays, um, he does have another church, so he comes at. Uh, occasionally, but um, his aunt is not doing well. Her name is Jody. Um, I don't know details on what's going on for sure, but I know the, the family is really concerned and they could do some prayers. Um, and then obviously our continued our prayer list that we have here. But other than that, I think we're, I think I got everything. I'll ask that you all rise and we'll open up in a word of prayer. Dear Most Grace Heavenly Father, Father, we thank you for this wonderful day. Lord, we just ask that you be with those that are on the prayer list, and Father, that you would uh, put your healing hand down upon them, and Father, that you would allow uh, us to be comforters for them. Father, we lift up Jody and we lift up Brenda to you, Father, and for all the other ones that are on our list, and Father, the ones that may not have been mentioned. Father, we just want to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Lord, I ask that you be with John and you be with Bill as they deliver you the meditations and the message, Father, that you would speak through them. Father, we're so thankful for all the help that we have, and cleaning our, 
all the pews and Father, uh, making sure everything's sanitary and safe. Lord, we just thank you so much for all them, for all the minor details that are gone throughout that help this run. Father, we're thankful that we're able to come here to praise you, honor you, and Father, with our voices, we ask that they just lift up to heaven and put a smile upon your face. And Father, we just ask that you'd be you'd be receptive of your word. I thank you all for all that you do, Lord, but especially for Jesus. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. verse 34. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died, more than that who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us.
Today I want to share something a little different uh, in regards to offerings. I want to share with you a, a true story of what the offerings uh, that you give to the Creve Corps Christian Church um, have, a, have a way of, of uh, getting the word of Jesus Christ out into the hearts and minds of people. And um, something that I started doing in my retirement for a couple years was working with a group called Ignite Church Planting in Chicago. And uh, Ignite uh, has done some tremendous work uh, over the years. We supported uh, the church in Oregon that was a restart um, and uh, have continued to support uh, Ignite since then. Recently, because of the generosity of your giving, uh, the missions team found that we had some excess money, and we recently made an additional gift to Ignite, who had just hired a new um, uh, leader and uh, uh, church planter, uh, a fellow by the name of Chris Wright. And uh, some of you long-timers uh, will remember um, his wife, Lori Keener, um, who uh, they're working together now with Ignite, and we were able to give a one-time gift to their startup ministry with Ignite. But at the same time, we were also able to continue supporting, and uh, another person was hired um, and called to um, help plant uh, a different kind of church in Chicago. And let me just tell you the story as it, as it unfolded. James grew up in a Muslim household in Tehran, Iran. By the age of 12, he was a teacher of the Koran to people in his mosque. He said, I was seeking Allah, not realizing God was looking for me and found me. His mother and father divorced when he was 17, and he became the legal guardian of his brother and sister, and he raised them, and then he found a wife, Joy. However, he wasn't happy in Iran, and he moved to Turkey to start a new life, but Joy did not go with him. In Turkey, he met a young pastor who gave James a Bible, and James was a teacher of Islam, and he debated with this teacher of the gospel, and James had many questions that the pastor was unable to answer. Though this was true, when the pastor prayed, James saw that God answered his prayers, which was something he had never experienced as a Muslim. James was attracted to the simple faith and love of his pastor, and after experiencing God's healing during a medical emergency, James gave his life to Jesus. From this point on, everything changed. James began to serve the church in Turkey. He called his wife in Iran, trying to connect with her, for they had been separated for seven months. She refused his calls, but he prayed that her heart would be softened. Church people prayed for her, and Joy finally called and agreed to visit him in Turkey. She came, and a month later, she accepted Jesus as her Savior, and together they are now followers of Christ. They attended Elam Ministry Bible School in Turkey and continued serving in the church. James was a worship leader, and uh, Joy served as a children and family pastor. They immigrated to the United States in 2013, arriving in Chicago, not knowing anyone, having no family here, and only spoke a few words of English. <laughs> James said, we only had $125 and the first night we spent 60 on a hotel room. They, however, we saw the Lord would provide and didn't worry about the money. We trusted God, asking him where he wanted to send us, and it was Chicago, and we said okay. They started a Bible study in downtown Chicago and began meeting people. One man who came was a key connector with them, uh, but he died in 2019. But he had told James, I've been praying for 20 years for a Farsi-speaking church to be started here, and I will be praying for you every day. After his funeral, the man's wife told James she found a piece of paper in his Bible with two prayer requests, for a Farsi-speaking church and for James and Joy. James began an online church when Joy's uncle became a follower of Jesus. He lives in Iran, and there are no churches above ground in Iran. They began meeting by way of Skype, and James would teach them. And the uncle began inviting others to attend the meeting. And soon there were eight people attending. James sent them a Bible. 
And the people began sharing Jesus with their friends. The group grew to 20, and then to 50, and now there are over 200 gathering together. And some of them have left Iran and gone to other countries <clears throat> and have started Bible studies where they're at in Iran and Turkey, Serbia, Italy, and Germany, just to mention a few. And now James is discipling future leaders who will begin in-person churches where they're located. We are grateful that God has connected James and Joy with Ignite and are looking forward to planning an in-person church in Chicago where there are many thousands of Farsi-speaking people who need to hear the gospel. And so this is what some of our offerings are able to contribute to. And I, I, I just thank you for being the generous congregation that you have been over the years in so many ways, helping people with need for food, but also with need for food that is spiritual, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Would you pray with me? Father God in heaven, we thank you so much for the offering as it is presented. Uh, no matter how it arrives, Father, we thank you for those who keep remembering this church and our mission in whatever ways possible by sending gifts through the mail or, or, or contributing through online banking or, or just bringing their offerings here and putting them in the plate that is provided. Father, we pray that these things will be used to continue to spread the gospel. And we give you thanks for all that you provide in Jesus' name. Amen.
Good morning, friends. It is good to gather as God's people to lift our voices in praise before His throne. Glad that you're here. The one in whom we believe, in whom we trust, in whom we hope, this one whose appearing we eagerly await. Where is He? What is He doing? Jesus, Lord, Savior, Lamb of God, is seated at the right hand of God in all His glory, and from there He reigns forever and ever. Today's theme is the ascension, the rising of Jesus from this physical earth back to the right hand of God in His glory. We read about it in Acts chapter 1, verses 9 through 11. It reads like this in the New American Standard. And after Jesus had said these things, He was lifted up while they were looking on. And a cloud received Him out of their sight. And as they were gazing intently into the sky while He was going, behold, two men in white clothing stood beside them. They also said, Men of Galilee... Why do you stand looking into the sky? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in just the same way as you have watched him go into heaven. You know, sometimes we who follow Jesus appear just about as bewildered as the apostles in these verses. We look around, we gaze up into the heavens, we wonder where Jesus is. We wonder what he's doing. And we simply need the reassurance that these things we have seen and that we have heard are true. Sometimes our faith needs to be fortified. It needs to be buttressed. And we hear the angel voices through the pages of Scripture. Jesus will come again, just as you have seen him go. And therefore, my friends, what we need to do day in and day out is to take heart. We need to rejoice. We need to be at peace. We need to live as citizens of His kingdom. I want to work today primarily from Colossians chapter 3, the first paragraph. It's verses 1 through 4. In which the Apostle Paul writes, Therefore, if you have been raised up with Christ, keep seeking the things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things above, not on the things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with Him in glory. Reminds me of the old hymn oft sung in the a cappella churches. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me to heaven's open door. And I just can't feel at home in this world anymore. Maybe it is because I'm a citizen of a different kingdom that I cannot feel at home in this world anymore. You see, when we follow Jesus, we do take citizenship in His kingdom, and He reigns then as our King. Jesus, seated at God's right hand, upon His throne, from whence He reigns. Here it is, mid-October. Midwest, the United States of America, and once again we find ourselves in the midst of the heated political season of a pending presidential election. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of 80% of the commercials on TV and the radio being political. Democrats think that Biden is brilliant and Trump is adult. Republicans think Trump has it all together and Biden can't walk and chew gum at the same time. The sad thing is that I find even Christians dividing along lines of political party rather than uniting as citizens of His kingdom. And that is sad. 
Worse yet, I think it's downright sinful. What we all need to remember is this. Jesus will come again just as you have seen Him go. And so today, we live in that eager expectation, but we live as citizens of His kingdom. I have a paragraph now in my notes that I want to share with you. Guaranteed to upset just about everybody. So much for pastor appreciation, Brody. I would point out that every aspect of life is spiritual. When we try to remove our faith from any area of who we are as followers of Christ in this world, we do disservice to discipleship. The mantra of don't mix faith and politics is a false dichotomy. Those who seek to divorce the two do disservice and damage to both. For every issue of life is spiritual. Abortion, that barbaric slaughter of children, is spiritual. Gender issues and sexual orientation are spiritual issues. Environmental concerns, our stewardship of creation, is spiritual. Fair business practices, what in the Old Testament we see as just scales, is spiritual. The treatment of sojourners in the land, the issue of immigration, is spiritual. One that I absolutely abhor, the paying of taxes, is spiritual. Shall I go on? I'm not going to. But everything that we're told is a political issue <laughs> is first and foremost a spiritual issue. For every aspect of life is spiritual. And as Christians, we bring it into submission, therefore, to the kingship of Jesus Christ. In this world, on this planet Earth, where I was born in Paris, Illinois, raised and educated in Illinois, and then ministered throughout the Midwest over my years, and now in my old age back in Illinois, I am a citizen of the United States of America. <clears throat> and next month, I will exercise my privilege, my right to vote.